It's a rivalry of mind and spirit as these eight players cast their cards, dueling for control and the ultimate achievement in a sport of skill, strategy, and the luck of the draw at the Magic the Gathering World Championships. Magic the Gathering is a card game of skill and strategy, much like poker or bridge. The goal of Magic is to eliminate your opponent by knocking their score down to zero. Each player starts the game with a score of 20 and uses cards to attack their opponent in a variety of ways to lower their score. What makes Magic different from other card games is that competitors are allowed to build their own playing decks. Every deck must contain 60 cards, but each deck is a reflection of a player's personal playing style. Aggressive players usually choose cards which allow them to attack quickly and with great force, while more conservative players select cards which create a slower, more defensive game. So when two players compete in Magic, they pit both their playing skill and their deck design against each other. The first three days of the World Championships are devoted to grueling preliminary rounds, where competitors from 40 countries play a different game format each day for 21 rounds of Swiss pairings. Each game format requires players to build a different deck. The top eight ranked players advance to the finals, where they play in a single elimination bracket to determine the winner. The energy is high in Seattle, Washington for the World Championships. With $250,000 in prize money at stake, it'll take an artful master to capture the trophy. We've completed the preliminary rounds to get to the top eight. It's been four years since an American took the trophy at the World Championships, but with seven Americans among the top eight, it seems the U.S. players are dominating this tournament just like they've done all year. We asked some of the top Pro Tour players to comment on why they've been so successful. Oh my God! I've been wondering why it is the Americans have been doing so well this year. I mainly attribute it to the internet. What you have is a lot of players that are constantly together on the internet by constantly talking to each other, you know, relating information. Americans have done really well in the pro tour this year. The main reason is just the, the sheer amount of. Of, of tournaments and Magic players in the United States. There's such a diversified Magic scene between East Coast, West Coast, all the different areas. It, it gives a lot of uh, different players abilities to come up with ideas that you just wouldn't see in other countries. A lot of the Magic players are able to play against each other a lot and just work a lot to see what, what works the best. You know, that in turn translates to the results. Coming up, spells, creatures, and cunning maneuvers at the quarterfinals of the 5th Annual Magic the Gathering World Championships. Welcome back to Magic the Gathering. Card selection is an important element in this game. Let's get a handle on what the players call their deck strategy. Although there are thousands of Magic cards and numerous deck types for players to compete with, only a few decks are used at any one tournament. This is the result of competitors playtesting and sharing results over the internet to determine which decks will be best suited for a particular event. This process is known as the metagame. The metagame leading up to the Worlds resulted in two main decks, Sly and Recurring Nightmare. Sly is a red deck built around the principle of speed. Sly's strategy is to strike early and often with a combination of small creature and spell cards in an attempt to inflict damage quickly. Early game, a player casts many small creatures and spells, such as Mog Fanatic, Jackal Pup, and Shock. During the middle game, the player turns to non-creature cards, like Cursed Scroll, capable of direct damage. If forced into a longer game, the player can still use a spell like Hammer of Bogarden to eke out a win. In contrast, Recurring Nightmare is mainly a black and green deck that is designed for control. It uses a combination of creature and spell cards to build a strong defense until it can take control of the game. Early on, a player tries to slow the game by using creatures like Spike Feeder and spells such as Survival of the Fittest. In middle game, the player will use the deck's key card, Recurring Nightmare, to draw more cards from his graveyard or discard pile, destroy an opponent's creatures, and gain additional points. Once control has been established in late game, the player pulls out one of his two powerful creatures, Verdant Force or Spirit of the Night, to attack and win the game. Let's see how the top eight fared in the quarterfinals. Levy versus Hacker began the round. 
Known for his wild blue hair and awesome playing skills, San Diego native Brian Hacker is no stranger to the world's competition. I get to be very aggressive with this deck. This deck is very fast, has a lot of creatures, and so from the first turn, I'll be putting a very aggressive stance against my opponent. I'm going to want to get a quick start. I'm going to want to put the pressure squarely upon my opponent and make him have to deal with my threats. The competitive aspect is important to me. I like being in a tournament where there's 400, 500 people sometimes all competing to be the best. And that, that competitive aspect is kind of a big adrenaline rush. Ryan Hacker played the only rogue deck in the top eight, a mono white deck known as White Weenie. It was a tight match as Hacker battled Levy's recurring nightmare deck. Hacker was leery of Levy's deck before going into the quarterfinals, but managed to drag out the match to the fifth game before losing. Levy advances to the semis, defeating Hacker three games to two. Quarterfinals continued with Selden versus Pakula. One of the most outspoken proponents of magic, Chris Pakula has been a regular color commentator on the Pro Tour circuit. Well, the Pro Tour has done a lot for me in terms of, I've been able to meet friends from all around the world, which is really cool. And uh, the important thing is that it's intelligent people. I really enjoy playing the deck I chose to play in the standard tournament. Uh, the biggest thing is kind of a feeling of relief. You don't really quite have to think as much with this deck. You're just out there to kill your opponent. Why do I want to win? I think that making the top eight kind of gets the respect back that I wanted to get. And uh, from here on out, it's, it's the money. This round consisted of four games all involving the quick mono red slide deck against the slow controlling recurring nightmare deck. Chris Pakula showed great skill with Sly, winning the first game, but was never able to repeat that performance. Selden did an outstanding job of stalling and gaining points and went on to defeat Pakula three games to one. If you're wondering what's behind that poker face, John Finkel gave us some insight. Psychology is really important because my opponent has to has to make decisions based upon an unknown, what I have in my hand. So I told him to make the wrong decision at the wrong time, and that'll give me a chance to win. We'll be right back. You're looking at historic Pike Place Market, a landmark here in Seattle, the site of the Magic 1998 World Championships. In other top eight quarterfinal action, it was Scott Johns versus Ben Rubin. Holding a degree in music from California State University, Scott Johns came to the worlds with an optimistic attitude. I think Magic has a worldwide appeal because it's always different. Every time you play, it's a completely new game. You never know what's going to come out of it. It's, it keeps you always playing to see what's new. I describe my playing style as flexible. I tend to do well with aggressive decks, but if there's an environment where I think a slower deck will do well, I'll play it. Magic has done a lot of things for me personally. They basically paid for my college and helped me get a car. And, and that's been really great, but on top of that, I've made great friends. I've gotten to travel all over the world, and I've had so much fun playing the game. This was the second time we saw Sly battle recurring nightmare. But this time, Ben Rubin's Sly deck's quick offense proved too much for Scott John's recurring nightmare to deal with, as Rubin advances to the semifinals. Which brings us to our last quarterfinals match, John Finkel against Alan Comer. Comer is highly regarded in the playing community for his deck designs, and Finkel is 1998's Pro Tour Player of the Year. Leave it to John Finkel to disprove conventional wisdom about the Sly versus recurring nightmare matchup. Finkel, this year's Pro Tour Phenom, made the most of Sly and went on to defeat Comer three games to none, advancing to the semifinals. He'll play Pro Tour LA finalist Ben Rubin, while Frenchman Raphael Levy meets the rookie from San Diego, California, 17-year-old Brian Selden. The new Pro Tour season is quickly approaching. Look for these tournaments to produce more champions of magic. The outcome of our first semifinal match is all in the cards. But before we get to Finkel versus Rubin, let's review how the game is played. Remember, each player starts with 20 points and a customized deck. Competitors draw cards from their decks to launch offensive and defensive maneuvers, which knock down their opponent's score. The game is over when one contender's score is reduced to zero. As we head into the semifinals, John Finkel and Ben Rubin both have their eyes on the title and the top prize. There's a lot of money at stake here.
This match pits two different Sly decks against each other. Take Creatures. Finkel has selected Fire Slingers, while Ruben plays Mog Flunkies and Goblin Vandals. This difference favors Finkel, as Fire Slingers will prove to be more disruptive, allowing Finkel to destroy most of Ruben's first and second turn creatures. Now let's look at land. Finkel has 18 land cards, while Ruben only has 17. This may not seem like a big difference, but Finkel has a better chance of getting early mana, which is crucial to the deck's consistency. Finkel is highly regarded as one of the best players in the game. I'd always been interested in games, and I walked to game shop one day, and there were people playing this card game, it looked interesting. So I started playing, and here I am, you know, four and a half years later, the World Championships. Basically, I'm just trying to let my opponent think that my hand is as good as possible. I want my opponent to be playing scared. Attitude is incredibly important. If you can make your opponent think that they're going to lose, a lot of times they will lose. I think Magic is worldwide because it has a lot of concepts everyone can relate to. I mean, you don't need to understand English to understand what these things do, and you can you know, communicate with other people just by playing a game, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Let's join commentators Brian Weissman and Chris Pakula for the first game of the semifinals now in progress. John Finkel's leading 18 to 15. Any draws? Ball lightning. Kaboom. So what life is Ruben? Is it 15? Yep, now we got some math to do. Okay, well, can Finkel has can seven points in his hand. So that ball lightning changes the math a lot. Yeah, that sure it does. does. That's what six ones do. And Iron Claw Orc can't even think about blocking. Do you think that uh, Ruben's not. contemplating Fire Blast here? Fire Blast in that I he agree. just drops him out of having the mana to use his Cursed Scroll. It's a, I mean, either way, this Ball Lightning's horrible for Ruben. Yeah, definitely. You know, when Ruben made uh, the finals of Pro Tour LA, there was a lot of talk he was just kind of a flash in the pan. But obviously, he's in the finals here. He's kind of proven himself, hasn't he? Yeah, well, whenever anyone's in their rookie season, uh, somewhat of a attitude on the Pro Tour that Maybe it was a fluke when they have their first good finish, but uh, even though he's not going to be able to win the Rookie of the Year award, he's still definitely proven in just his first season that he's a force to be reckoned with on the tour. And I think we're going to see him doing well for quite a while. This is a tough situation. Tough call here. So you would not fire blast the ball. I'm not sure. Just just I'm rethinking that now. I'm not sure what I would do. Take it's six just, like it's not. Both, both situations are horrible. That's part. Of it. I, one ball lightning changes everything. Takes a hit from the ball lightning. That's sure to lose the game. Um, Just because of how much burn is in is in Finkel's hand. Well, Finkel's at 18. Ruben can untap. Tap for 4, 14. Scroll over five. Fire blast puts Finkel at four. If Finkel hammers here. Wow. He is fire blast. And he does fire blast the ball lightning. And he. Yeah. That's playing it really carefully, just betting on the orcs to do the job. Well, now the orcs are dead. Well, one die. I don't know. <coughs> Knocks and draws. Wow. Well, I didn't see think it was 16. I don't think it was a land. Well, it was. It was a land. Well, that's good. Drew Mount. That's good for Ben. That's exactly what he needed. So now he's still got an active scroll. Here comes the hammer. I think I'll draw a land here. This is bad. Gory. Ben. Land. It's a land. Wow. Dead orc. And that's hammer every turn. Bigger than scroll. So now it's a race that, uh. Uh. Ben does have two fire blasts, so if he draws two straight mountains, maybe he wins. Yeah. If not, he's taking more damage. If not, if he, if he misses, starts missing scroll turns, that's really bad. Oh, Wasteland. Wasteland's a, not a good draw here either. Alright, Finkel goes to town now. Boom, boom. There's yeah. another mountain. How many? Brunch. Now he might hold this mountain to scare oh. Ben. He doesn't go. Nah. Ruben goes to 12. Ruben scrolls Finkel down to 12. Wow, what a what a race here! Yeah, what a gnome could change the math too. Yeah, it sure could. Mountain. So Ruben needs one more mountain to really be happy, so that he can know he can end with a double fire blast. And go draws hammer again. Go fire slinger. slinger. Well, fire slinger is not a great draw, but I'm sure John will find something good to do with it. Mm -hmm. I attribute my success in Magic to the, a lot of playing, basically. I spend a lot of time thinking about the game, thinking about the upcoming major event, and playtesting decks and ideas until I find something that seems to work incredibly well in that format. And then I play it and hope to minimize luck as much as I can.
can go hammers. Situation is so tense here. One more mountain and Ruben wins. It's Crystal, it's crystal you know, Right Venice. now, in fact. Yep. Uh, will he scroll during upkeep? Uh, I would imagine. I think it goes to 10. All right, if Ruben draws a mountain right now, he wins the match. Fingo's got his toes crossed under the table. And it's a ball. Ball oh, lightning. Oh, my. Fingo can fire blast it, though. That's not good for John. No, it's not good. Mm -hmm. he can, then he can't cast Hammer. He only has one extra land right now. He won't be able to, unless he draws him out, he can't cast Hammer. Wow, this is so close. Well, Fingo could draw a Fire Blast next turn. John Finkel already has won a lot of money this weekend, being on the winning U.S. national team, and now making the top four. I'm sure he wants to win a little bit more, but Ruben might end his dreams here. Finkel's also far and away the Pro Tour Player, player of the Year. Yeah, he has accomplished... He has a giant volume of points. <laughs> Close to 100, in fact. So here's the ball lightning. And I don't think Finkel needs to even think about this. He's been no, watching no, scroll with Fire Blast all No day. question that this ball lightning is going away. You know what? He's only one mountain away from being able to return Hammer again and still scroll with right, it. Right, yeah, I said if he draws a mountain, everything's fine. If he well, doesn't not, draw a mountain. Wouldn't say fine. Well, it's not fine, but things are very... Draw a mountain! Mountain! There it is. Boom! God, there amazing. Hammer. And alright, this is it. If Ruben does not draw a mountain... He's still alive. Finkel doesn't have the Fire Blast anymore. Oh, you're right. Ruben draws. Don't see it. Is that ball lightning? Oh, oh my! Oh. It's game. Seven, six. Wham. So far. Ben Ruben has defeated John oh, Finkel. Sure. John Finkel goes down three games to one, so Ben Ruben advances to the finals. Wow. Ben Ruben, a finalist in Pro Tour Los Angeles, will go on to play the winner of the Selden Levy matchup. Though John Finkel didn't make it to the finals, he leads the Pro Tour with nearly $85,000 in winnings. More semifinals action when we return.